This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Can Apple save the iPhone 13 mini? Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And as a lot of you know, I was gushing over the idea of a mini iPhone even before the iPhone 12 mini came out. And when it finally did come out, I instantly fell in love with its smaller design. My immediate reaction seeing the iPhone mini for the first time was, this really does feel like the iPhone that Steve Jobs would have made if he was still around with us. With those squared off sides and a size that was only slightly bigger than the iPhone 5, it really felt like the spiritual successor to the iPhone 5 design and not the giant slabs of phones we got with the iPhone 6 to the modern day era of smartphones. To me, it just felt like the perfect one-handed phone with what honestly, I feel like was still a big enough, usable 5.4 inch display and packed with every single feature the regular sized iPhone 12 had. With that in mind, I instantly thought that this was going to be one of the most popular iPhone models that Apple was going to sell for this iPhone cycle for a few reasons. Pricing being the biggest among them. This was the cheapest and most budget friendly way to get yourself a modern day iPhone 12 with all of the same features for $100 less. Secondly, with its smaller size, I thought we would have a wave of holdouts from the old era of the iPhone design rapidly exchanging their smaller iPhone SEs, 6s, 7s, and 8s, and maybe a few holdouts still using an iPhone 5 or 5S. I thought all of those people were going to see the size of this mini, pick it up in stores, and go, wow, this this is the phone that I have been waiting for for all these years. This is the best iPhone design since the iPhone 4. And that didn't necessarily happen. Actually, the complete opposite happened. And from most reports out there, the iPhone 12 mini is an unapologetic failure, with these smartphones supposedly selling way below what Apple was expecting and Apple even cutting off manufacturing for the iPhone 12 mini entirely because they already had enough supply to last them through the rest of the year. And that is a rare problem for Apple to have. They usually have supply chain masters and they can predict with a stunning amount of accuracy how well each iPhone model is going to sell and making sure that there isn't a huge pile of remaining inventory sitting in stores or warehouses like the scenario I just described. So with lackluster sales, well, at least lackluster sales from Apple's standpoint, if another manufacturer released the Mini, I'm sure they'd be happy with the sales, but for Apple, this iPhone didn't sell that much, and now that we are on the verge of the iPhone 13 release cycle, and supposedly we are also going to get an iPhone 13 Mini, is there any way that Apple can save the iPhone 13 Mini? Well, I think they can but it may not be happening in the way you were expecting. First, we need to identify why people aren't buying the iPhone 12 mini. And I think there's actually a couple reasons behind this. The first and most obvious to me is that the modern world of smartphones have changed so much since the days of the iPhone 5. For most people, the smartphone has become their primary computing device. The device where they spend most of their computing time and the device that they use most often. Because most of us are doing more and more tasks on our smartphone every day, we want a much bigger display than we were used to even five years ago. And the bigger iPhone models have become increasingly popular as Apple has slowly been creeping up the normal display size of an iPhone from a 4.7 inch display with the iPhone 6 to a 5.8 inch display with the iPhone 10 and now 6.1 inch displays with phones like the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 12. Think of that, people used to laugh at phones like the Galaxy Note with one reviewer calling it positively gargantuan. And that phone only had a 5.3 inch display at the time. I remember similar reactions to when the iPhone 6 Plus came out and people were so taken back by its huge size of a phone, calling it a supersized iPhone and you know, things like a phablet, and those plus models only came with a 5.5 inch display. Now a 6.1 inch iPhone is the normal size, and phones like the iPhone 12 Pro Max go up to screen sizes of up to 6.7 inches. So even though the mini has a very usable, in my opinion, 5.4 inch display, 
For most consumers, they have moved even beyond the screen sizes like the Plus models that we used to have. But perhaps even more importantly, there's something a bigger phone body accommodates that is possibly even more important than just a bigger display. And that's battery. Because phones like the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro Max have a much bigger body size than the iPhone 12 mini. And even though literally every other component can be pretty much the same between the mini and the regular iPhone 12, the regular iPhone 12 has better battery life because it just has more internal space inside of the phone to house a bigger physical battery. That's why the iPhone 12 Pro Max, despite having a bigger and brighter display to power than the regular 12, still has better battery life than the 12 because battery capacity is just so important to a phone having longer battery life. And from my experience, and basically every other reviewer on the planet's experience with the 12 mini, the battery life just wasn't up to the task of making sure a user could get through a heavy day of usage without having to charge the phone. Despite the fact that the Mini has better battery life than previous phones we were used to just a few years ago, like the iPhone 7. It doesn't mean much when you've been spoiled by the battery life of bigger phones like the iPhone XR and the iPhone 11. Our smartphone habits have changed so much from even just a few years ago. We're spending all day watching YouTube or TikTok videos, listening to music, browsing the web, taking pictures and videos, and our phones spend less time in our pockets and more time in our hands. Now, no matter if you're buying a mini iPhone or an iPhone 13 or an iPhone 13 Pro, or even an iPhone 13 Pro Max, no matter what device you're on, you need to start using a VPN, which is why you should check out one of the best VPNs out there, Surfshark VPN. Listen, there are a lot of VPNs out on the market today, but Surfshark is a step above others that has some of the fastest VPN connection speeds on the market. And it's also easy to use on every single device you own with just one subscription, so you can stay safe when accessing public Wi-Fi spots on your phone or when you're browsing the web at home. You can do that all securely on any operating system like Mac, iOS, Windows, Android, and more. Not only is Surfshark easy to use, but it also comes jam-packed with features, letting you pick which country to use as a virtual network, letting you bypass artificial geo-blocking content. So that means you can get past censored web content in some countries or access other large catalogs of content. For example, Netflix has separate country libraries which are different depending on which country you log in from, like Japan's huge library of exclusive shows. And Surfshark is also safe, secure, and private because it maintains a strict no logs policy so they never keep your data and it's all backed up by industry leading encryption best of all surfshark has a special code just for greg's gadgets viewers that will give you an 83 percent discount off a plan and three extra months of service for free you can get this all by clicking the link in the description so make sure you check out surfshark vpn and thank you so much to surfshark vpn for sponsoring this video and if you were to ask a reviewer, I think they would probably point out those two issues as being one of the main reasons for the iPhone 12 mini's failure. But I also think there's perhaps another reason, the name. Like I said before, despite having used big iPhones as my primary phones for the last few years, I was immediately, without any hassle able to adapt to the mini smaller display and form factor. Again, that 5.4 inch display is kind of close to the 5.5 inch display we used to get on the iPhone 8 Plus and technically bigger than the 5.3 inch display on the original Galaxy Note. I also found that the iOS interface actually is very well suited for phones with a smaller display size, and I think it makes use of the available display space better than Apple's bigger phones like the Pro Max. So if I, a pretty experienced smartphone reviewer, could adapt so fast, I feel like most people, especially those upgrading from older iPhones, shouldn't have felt that the Mini's display was too small. But how could they know that? 
they couldn't. The iPhone 12 mini was mainly sold online due to many Apple and many third-party physical retail stores being closed down for the majority of 2020 and into 2021. So the average customer looking at Apple's online marketing could only see that, hey, there's a new iPhone and it's mini. I don't want a mini smartphone because the display is going to be too small. Even though the display sizes were listed, I think because users couldn't go into the stores and actually hold the iPhone 12 mini in their hands and see that the display size was fine and maybe even possibly a bigger display than some of the older iPhones they were using, because they just shopped online and because this is the first iPhone that Apple has ever marketed as being mini, you might think it's smaller than the older iPhones, like the iPhone SE 2 or the iPhone 8, when in reality, it is a smaller phone, but the display on that phone is much bigger, even though the physical footprint is smaller. So I think even just the simple removal of the mini designation of the iPhone 12 mini, or this future iPhone 13 mini would actually boost sales. And I think if Apple would just call this next iPhone 13 mini, the iPhone 13, and maybe call the regular sized iPhone 13, the iPhone 13 plus, or hey, if they've learned anything from selling MacBooks over the years, just sell two separate iPhones with the display sizes listed next to them and don't name them anything different. Even with that change, and if stores are opening up for shoppers to actually get a hold of this phone in their hand, there's still a few hurdles that the 13 mini will need to clear if it wants a chance at establishing its reputation and boosting sales. And that has to do with this next review cycle because Apple needs to make gains in one area and that is battery life. Again, that was the biggest complaint I and almost every other reviewer on the planet had with the mini. And based on the iPhone 13 rumors, it looks like the mini is rumored to be getting a battery capacity boost for this year's model. So if Apple can boost the battery of the iPhone 13 mini and squeeze out maybe an extra hour, hopefully a little bit more, I think that could be just enough to put that phone over the battery life line for most users, even if it isn't a two day battery champ like the Pro Max. It has to at least get through a moderate day of usage on a single charge, and I think that would be a positive enough development for this phone. Second, the pricing. The iPhone 12 mini, I think, was probably priced too high for most people for a smartphone, especially when they compare it against other smaller phones from Apple over the year, like the recent iPhone SE, which came in at just around $400. I think even a modest price decrease of just $50 for the iPhone 13 mini, going from $699 to $650 unlocked, could be enough of a perception change to have users consider going for that iPhone over the more expensive iPhone 13. However, the changes I just listed still might not be enough to save the iPhone 13 mini. And in all likelihood, things like a price drop are near impossible of happening this year. However, that doesn't mean there isn't hope for the mini in this lineup entirely, because this type of phone could one day reemerge as a different device that could lead to becoming a huge success. And that success lies in the mini's rebirth as the next iPhone SE. Because if we look at how the iPhone SE was made over the years, we can see that it has followed two constants, one being that it's on the smaller side, with Apple using the iPhone 5 body for the original iPhone SE and the body of the iPhone 8 for the SE 2. Second, it uses an older body style, which we kind of just established. So as we get into the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 15 with newer style bodies and newer designs, well, what phone body would be a more perfect candidate for the SE treatment than the iPhone 12 mini? Especially if the reports are true that Apple still has a lot of iPhone minis in stock they could recycle those older bodies to fit in new components and modern chips to bring this phone into the low cost SE model. An iPhone 12 mini body with whatever modern chip, say the iPhone 14 or 15 has, and put that price down to $1,400, that could be an absolute monster in terms of sales. And as it targets a more budget focused consumer and users who love the smaller iPhone body size, 
those two customer groups coming together could lead to the sales success we saw with the original iPhone SE. That I believe is the mini's saving grace, the ability to become the next iPhone SE, and that could redeem the mini and turn it into the sales success that Apple was originally expecting. But enough about my ideas for the future iPhone mini. Let me know about your ideas in the comments below. Do you think there's anything Apple can do to save the iPhone 13 mini? Or do you think it's doomed to fail? Or do you think there's a chance that the mini could become the new iPhone SE and become a success? And also, if you like this video, let me know what you think in the comments below. And also, give me a like. If you want to see more from the channel, including future coverage of the iPhone 13 mini, maybe it will be a success. Make sure you're subscribed. We're going to be seeing those phones in just a month now. Uh, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.